Hey everybody, this is Wool Dogga, Ableton Live Certified Trainer. I just want to say thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. Now the tutorial you're about to watch is a full lesson from my brand new Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 course. You can find more information about that by clicking the link in the description. But I also have a free gift for you just for watching and checking out this tutorial. Click the link in the description and you can sign up to get my free Getting Started with Ableton Live 11 guide. All right, let's waste some more time. Let's get to it. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what I think is probably one of the best improvements and additions to Live 11, and that is the brand new updates uh, to instrument racks. There's some really, really cool stuff included in Live 11, uh, and so let's get right to it. So what I want to do to start with is just load a, a default instrument rack. So I'm going to double click here to load our instrument rack. Uh, initially, this is going to look probably pretty similar to what you're used to seeing. But as you look at this a bit more, you might go, huh, I think there's a new button here. So obviously we have our device on off that we're used to. Then we get this show macro controls button again, which we're completely used to seeing. But now when we click it, we get two new options. Uh, this is has to be one of the most requested features I hear about live often. And Ableton has given it to us in live 11. That's the ability to show and add more macros than just the default eight. We also have the ability to remove macros. So let me show you how that works. So I have eight macros here. If I press plus, it's going to add uh, new macros and sets of two all the way up to 16 macros, right? So that's a huge, huge improvement from only having eight. Uh, and if I press minus, it's going to remove them in groups of two all the way down to one macro. So you can probably start to imagine uh, the possibilities that uh, all the things that are possible by um, you know adding up to 16 macros, getting down to only one macro, uh, tons and tons of possibilities with that. Now let me show you one of my favorite things about that, and we'll walk through a couple of the other new features uh, included in Instrument Racks. So what I've got, I've got a preset loaded into here. I think what's cool about this, the add and new macros thing, this is one of the first things I tested, because I thought, hmm, this is interesting, how is this gonna work? Let's say I wanna get this preset down to literally just this filter cutoff, right? To adjust the frequency cutoff for this filter. So I'm gonna press minus to get all the way down to just that filter. So now what's really cool about this is if I <clears throat> jump over, uh, let me take you over to push. I'm just gonna play this pad sound here, okay? <clears throat> so I can play this and adjust the filter. And let me take you over to Ableton. Okay, so you can see as I'm playing this pad sound, adjust this filter and I just have this one knob like super super simple to understand super simple to see uh, and it's a great looking UI like it looks like it belongs in Ableton Live which is great okay so that's a really really nice feature but you may be like me and I'm thinking will you just took something that had eight macros and reduce it down to one what have you done you lost your life's work your preset is ruined. what do we do Ableton made it super simple press plus and as I press plus, it's going to add back all those macros um, that basically are just kind of staying there and hanging out under the hood. So I'm not deleting. I'm just showing more or taking um, some away. So I think, again, that's a really, really great feature of instrument racks, the, uh, the ability and uh, addition of uh, up to 16 macros and then taking it all the way down to just simply um, you know, one macro, tons and tons of possibilities there. A couple of other things I wanna show you in Instrument Racks uh, really quickly. Again, the fun is not over yet. So again, we can remove our show or hide macro controls there. But we have this brand new feature, and we're gonna dig more into this in, in the next lesson, so I don't wanna go too deep uh, in this. But we have the ability to save what's called macro variations. I think the best way to think about this is this is essentially like presets uh, that are storing uh, the the kind of location um, or the the uh, the placement of our macros, right? So let me show you what this looks like. Uh, again, we'll dive deeper into this in our next lesson. But if I press new, basically this is storing the the um, location of where all these macros are, what they're set to, the values that they're set to. Value is probably a better word than location. So now let's open our filter frequency all the way up. I can hit new. That's going to be a second variation. Let's maybe close this all the way down, press new. So now what I can do is I can launch this and you can see the filter changes, filter opens, filter closes, right? And so macro variations, I'm just doing this across filter. Let's get it back to kind of where it was. Uh, it can change multiple variables uh, at the same time. Let's take this reverb and now let's update this first variation, right? 
Uh, let's go to this one, trigger it. Let's put our reverb here. We can update this variation, right? And now when I trigger these, it's going to change both filter and reverb, which is really, really cool. Again, we're going to dive deeper into this in our next lesson because there's so much we could talk about. But I just want to show you macro variations is an incredibly cool new update to instrument racks. And then if we finally uh, kind of follow through here, we get to show or hide our devices. So we can see each device that is available in this instrument rack. And then we get to see our chain list. And so those two kind of remain exactly the way um, they've always been in instrument racks, um, which again, uh, really, really great updates to instrument racks. One final thing I wanna show you before we move on and dig in deeper in our next lesson with macro variations. Um, if I uh, clean these guys up, Let's get rid of our macro variations. Let's just see our macros. Um, one of the cool new features that Ableton introduced is this randomized macro control values. I think this is a part of kind of a bigger, grander vision that Ableton has, which is to add more expression, more life into your performances and into your recording. So um, things like uh, this randomized function, things like probability um, are all ways to add more expression, more life into your performances. I think it's one of the things that's really easy um, to create computer music and it just sounds very stale. It sounds very perfect. It's like a really good drummer. You can have a really good drummer play a beat and it's going to be a little behind, a little ahead. It's going to lock in. It's going to shift a little. When we do this in the computer, everything is just absolutely perfect. So it's, it's functionalities. It's things like this that really make computer music feel more realistic. So the way this works is if I press this randomize button, it's going to randomize the values of these macros, right? So it's going to um, change all of these. Now, let's say, for instance, I don't want this volume to change. That's probably a good thing. I could right click here and say exclude macro from randomization. I can leave my volume set all the way up here. Now, when I click randomize, it's going to randomize all the other values except for that volume. Um, and that's a really, really cool function. Again, one of my favorite features of instrument racks. Uh, so much stuff, so much work around uh, macros, uh, adding, removing macros, macro variations, and randomized stuff. So now let's dig a little bit further into this idea of macro variations, saving, storing those, recalling those, navigating them. Man, there's so much we could talk about. So super excited to get into that. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. As a reminder, don't forget about that free gift that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Click the link in the description to download that for free. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I would love to have you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever we post new content, start a live stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody.